essential part of our lives, even more so than most of us realize. Doors enable us to enter our homes, our schools, our churches, and our places of business. Without doors, we would be locked out of many comforts and joys of life. The ease and comfort of home, opportunities for worship in church, opportunities for work in the office. There are many kinds of doors, but all doors cannot be seen. There is a door to knowledge that we call study. There is a door to skill, which we have labeled practice. And a door to character, we call discipline. There is another door we cannot see, one which is just as real. It is the door to heaven. Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. There is only one door to heaven. People would have us believe there are many doors to heaven. Some say the door to heaven is good works. Some say the door to heaven is good character. Others say the door to heaven is church membership. And then there are those who insist that self-righteousness is the door to heaven. Many are indifferent to the life beyond and pay no attention to heaven's door. Some procrastinate, meaning to enter heaven's door sometime, but they cannot be concerned with it now. To all such, God says, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. But these doors lead only to destruction, for God says, there is none righteous, no, not one. Jesus said, there is none good but God. We can belong to many different churches, but unless we are members of the true church, which is the body of Christ, we are lost. It is not for us to trust in our own righteousness. The Bible says, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy hath he saved us. Christ is the only door to heaven. People have the idea that there is a special door to heaven for everyone. But how can we attribute such folly to God when we would not even attribute it to ourselves? None of us would build a home with special doors for each member of the family. We all use the same doors. And of course, we know that the door which is large enough for the biggest one of the family is large enough for the smallest, too. So it is with heaven's door. It is large enough to permit the biggest as well as the smallest sinner to enter if he but come seeking admittance in the name of Jesus. Some doors can be entered only after a specified entrance fee is paid. Heaven's door is open to all, without money and without price. But just because we pay nothing to enter does not mean that no price was paid. Oftentimes, great museums offer free admission to the public, in spite of the fact that they have been built at enormous cost. So it is with our entrance into heaven. It is free to us. But here is what it cost the Lord Jesus. Not silver and gold, nor precious stones, but his own precious blood. Some doors are open only certain hours of the day. Heaven's door is open at all times, night and day. But despite these facts, some will seek other ways to get into heaven. The Lord Jesus has this to say of them, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Doors enable us to seek shelter from the storms of life. And so, the door to heaven enables us to find shelter from the storm of God's wrath.
It makes all the difference in the world which side of the door we're on, the inside or the outside. Those who have chosen to enter heaven's door can never come under the wrath of God. But those who remain outside the door are already under the wrath of God and must suffer the full force of the storm when it breaks. Which side of the door are you on? Most doors permit us to carry anything through them as we enter. But heaven's door is very narrow and will permit us to take nothing with us. No one can carry his sin into heaven. Those who will not forsake their sin cannot enter heaven's door. But those who will allow the Lord Jesus to wash their sin away will be able to pass through heaven's door. No one can enter heaven with a heart of unbelief. Only a heart that believes on the Lord Jesus will have entrance there. Men cannot take their riches with them. At heaven's door, we part with all earthly gain. Earthly fame, too, must be forsaken at heaven's door. Even unsaved friends and loved ones must be left behind unless they can be won to the Savior before it's too late. But there are many things we shall leave behind gladly. At heaven's door we part with sorrow forevermore. We leave all suffering behind. All disappointment, too, will be gone forever. All worry will be left behind. There is only one thing we can take with us through that door those whom we have led to the Savior. What a joy it would be to take into the Savior's presence many whom we have won to him. Now, during the day of grace, the door of heaven is open wide, and the Savior's invitation to all is, come, enter in. Will you not answer that call? Will you not accept the Lord Jesus today and thereby become one of those who can enter heaven's door? Do not delay, my friend, for someday that door will close by God himself, and no power on earth will be able to open it. Then you will seek in vain to enter. Then you will have only vain regrets, because you did not enter while you could. But praise be to God for his mercy toward the children of men. Heaven's door is still wide open. Won't you enter while you may? Won't you heed the words of the Lord Jesus? when he says, I am the door, by me if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Won't you accept him as your savior and there take your place among those who will someday pass through heaven's door into the beautiful city of gold?